This lesson looks at how atoms are arranged in a molecule. There are a variety of possible arrangements and each one has its own name that reflects its 3D shape. A great way to visualize the molecules and their shapes is by using the FET Molecule Shapes website. And you can choose between looking at real molecules and models of molecules. So the shape of a molecule is determined by how many electron clouds are around the central atom and how many atoms are bonded to that central atom. So in this case here, the purple is our central atom, the atom that everything is bonded to. An electron cloud, also called area of electron density, is a set of electrons. These could be a lone pair of electrons that aren't bonded. It could be a pair of electrons in a single bond, two pairs of electrons in a double bond, or three pairs of electrons in a triple bond. As I go through this lesson, I will try to flick between using electron cloud, electron sets, and electron density, just so you get used to hearing the different names. So electrons are negatively charged particles and like charges repel. This means that each electron cloud repels all of the others. So if I try to drag one electron cloud closer to a second cloud or a second set of electrons, what you can see is that as I drag it closer, it starts to repel the clouds around it and pushes them away. And so the molecule wants to keep that same shape, that same arrangement. No matter where I move one electron set, the others all move to keep that same arrangement around the central atom. This is because the molecule is most stable when the electron clouds are as far away from each other as possible. And that's because this is resulting in the minimum amount of repulsion between each set of electrons. The idea that the electron clouds will try to be as far away from each other as possible is known as the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, also called VSEPR theory for short. So if I only have two sets of electrons around the central atom, those electron sets move further away from each other, whereas as I add more, the electron sets get closer together, but they're still as far away from each other as possible. So they've repelled each other to give themselves the maximum separation. To determine the shape name of a molecule, you need to work out firstly how many areas of electron density there are around the central atom. So in this case here, there's one, two, three, four areas of electron sets around that central atom. The second thing we need to work out to determine the name of the shape is how many electron sets are bonded to another atom. So in this case here, all we have are lone pairs of electrons. They're not bonded to any other atoms. But if we start to replace them with bonded atoms, now we have two lone pairs of electrons and two bond, single bonded sets of electrons. And again, even though I've replaced these two now with bonded atoms, we've still got that same arrangement of electron sets around the central atom. They're still in the same place that those lone pairs of electrons were. The number of electron clouds around the central atom determines the geometry of the molecule or how the electron clouds are arranged around the molecule. At level two, we look at three arrangements. If there are four sets of electrons around the central atom, the molecule has what's called a tetrahedral arrangement. So these four electron clouds are spread evenly around the central atom. And the bond angle 
or the angle between two of the attached atoms is 109 degrees. When there are only three electron clouds around that central atom, each electron cloud can spread out a little bit further. The bond angle increases and becomes 120 degrees. That's the maximum separation that we can get between the bonded atoms. And we call it trigonal planar. Trigonal because there's three. And planar because all of the electron sets sit in one plane. So if we look here, all three sets are flat. This face here is flat. When we only have two electron sets around the central atom, then these two sets of electrons can repel each other even more to give them a total separation of 180 degrees. And we call this arrangement linear because it just makes a straight line. But so far all we've looked at is how these sets of electrons are arranged around that central atom. We haven't yet looked at the name of the shape for each arrangement. And the reason for that is because the shape of the molecule is based on how many electron sets are bonded. These lone pairs of electrons, whilst they contribute to the arrangement of the molecule, how the electron sets are spread around that central atom, they aren't considered when we name the molecule. Only the bonded electron sets are considered when we name the molecule. So the first shape we'll look at is the tetrahedral molecule or the tetrahedral shape. So tetrahedral means that there are four electron sets around that central atom. And so it has a tetrahedral arrangement and a bond angle of 109. If all four of those electron sets are bonded to atoms, then the shape name is the same as its arrangement. In this case, tetrahedral. All four are bonded, its arrangement is tetrahedral, and its shape is also tetrahedral. However, if only three out of the four electron sets are bonded, it still has a tetrahedral arrangement because there are still four electron sets around that central atom, but this case, only three of those four sets are now bonded. The bond angle hasn't changed because all four sets are repelling each other. But now when we look at the name, we are only looking at the shape for the bonded electron sets. And so this one we call trigonal pyramid because it's got three bonded, so three trigonal. And if you look at it and kind of use your imagination, it looks a little bit like a 3D pyramid. And so if we have four electron sets around that central atom, but only three are bonded, we have a tetrahedral arrangement with a bond angle of 109, but the name of the shape is trigonal pyramid because only three out of four of those sets are bonded in contributing to the name of the shape. So in this case here, we still have a tetrahedral arrangement. There's still four electron sets around the central atom. So the bond angle hasn't changed because there are still four electron sets repelling each other. But the difference is, is that now only two out of those four electron sets are bonded to the central atom. And so this one here, when we're looking at the name of the molecule, this is the shape that we're looking at because only the bonded atoms contribute to the name. And so this one here, there's two different names it's given. More commonly, it will be called bent because it's literally bent, but sometimes it's also called V-shaped because if we flip it up the other way, it looks like a V. Our final one, which is a little bit less common, 
is when we still have four electron sets. So we still have a tetrahedral arrangement, but this time only one atom is bonded to that central atom, or only one electron set is bonding. And so this bonding electron set could be a single bond, it could be a double bond, it could be a triple bond. But we've still only got one electron set that's bonded. And if we look at the shape, it's a straight line. So the name of the shape is linear. So our next arrangement was trigonal planar, which is what happens when we have three electron sets around the central atom. So if only one of those electron sets is bonded, then the name of the shape is linear because it looks like a straight line. But if two out of three of those electron sets are bonded, then if we look at the shape, this is the exact same shape that we saw when we had a tetrahedral arrangement, but only two of the four were bonded. In this case, we've got a trigonal planar arrangement because there's only three electron sets. So the bond angle has increased to 120, but the name of the shape is still bent. Or if we flip it upside down, V-shaped. Because the name of the shape is what the molecule looks like in 3D. And we only take into account the bonded sets of electrons when we're looking at the shape. So here we've got that same bent shape that we did for the tetrahedral arrangement with only two bonded atoms or two bonded electron sets. The difference is, is that it's got a larger bond angle between these two electron sets because there is now less electron sets so they can repel further. If all three electron sets are bonded, then the name of the shape is the same as its arrangement. So here we've got a trigonal planar arrangement, and the name is also trigonal planar because there are three bonded electron sets, three atoms bonded to that central atom. So they all contribute to the name of the shape. Trigonal for three and planar because they're all lying in one plane or one dimension. So if we put it on paper, it would sit flat against the paper. So our final shape name is linear, which occurs when we have the two electron sets around the central atom. So they're repelling to give a bond angle of 180. That's the furthest they can get away from each other. And both electron sets are bonded to an atom. So they both contribute to the name of the shape. And so the arrangement is linear and the shape name is linear. It is also linear if we still have those electron sets, but one is a lone pair and one's a bonded pair because it is still a straight line. These are the molecular shapes that we look at in level two. If you want to have a go using this program so that you can make your own shapes and have a look at its shape names and molecule arrangement, as well as bond angles, I will link this URL in the comments below so that you can log on and have a go to and get to learn the shapes and the reason for the shape names and the bond angles.